Yeshua. Uh, if you have uh, your Bibles, would you uh, stand uh, or your Bible apps? Yes. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Amen. I said every person would stand if you're physically able. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 20 verse 35 through 37. Later, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, made an alliance with Ahaziah, king of Israel, whose ways were wicked. He agreed with him to construct a fleet of trading ships. After these were built at Ezion Geber, Eleazar, son of Donabe and Meshura, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, because you have made an alliance with Ahazia, the Lord will destroy what you have made. The ships were wrecked and they never set sail. You may be seated. I want to preach, uh, I want to preach Juwan tonight using as a subject, no wonder it didn't work out. No wonder it didn't work out. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them it's all going to make sense tonight? No wonder it didn't work out. A few years before uh, I moved to Atlanta, my comrade, uh, my friend, he's um, really a mentee, Prophet Marcus Thomas called me called me and uh, said there was a Caucasian businessman who wanted to put me and him in the aviation business. He claimed he wanted to give us a uh, Bombardier Challenger 300 and that we could rent it out to black clergymen and businessmen alike and have them pay into a uh, co-op pilot program all we needed to do was uh, pay for the jet to get serviced and pay for the hangar fee Marcus and I were so excited that, uh, we, we envisioned uh, painting the plane black and uh, making the interior red We were going to paint on the side of the plane, black air. Yeah. Yes. Excited. Uh, we calculated the cost and um, if all he was asking for us to do was to service it and to pay for the hangar, uh, this was uh, the steal of the century. We pulled our money together, sent our money to San Antonio, Texas. And a week later, the gentleman we uh, sent the money to was arrested for fraud. Because he had sold the same plane to three different people. And he wasn't even the owner. A few months later, Marcus calls me. Says, man, it's a mess what we went through. That's what he said. It's a mess what we went through. He said, uh, but uh, I found another deal. I to check this guy out, and uh, he has a um, he has uh, some information about a stock on a Shanghai composite. Got him on the phone, the broker. He convinced us that uh, this trade was going to make us multi-millionaires. And, uh, and uh, me and uh, Prophet, uh, Prophet, yeah. 
me and prophet Marcus pulled out all of our savings made this investment into this stock we were so convinced y'all ain't gonna believe it we were so convinced this was getting ready to go through we were looking for mansion houses on the Cayman Islands at the time I'm pastoring in Baltimore how I was gonna pay off Empowerment Temple I was gonna give my sister some money make sure my children were straight and uh the broker disappeared. The stock never hit. All of our life savings was gone. Marx and I were on the phone commiserating about our losses. How the devil got us. <laughs> and, uh, Marcus was apparently talking to me on speakerphone. She's talking to me on speakerphone and uh, we blowing balloons for our own pity party. And his wife walks in the room. And Prophet Marcus' wife said, you know what, maybe y'all shouldn't do business together and just be friends. Because whenever you want to do business, it doesn't work. I needed you all to know it cost me a lot of money. But I found out there are some people you just can't get in bed with. No matter how you try to force it, there'll be no success. No matter what promises are made. No matter what it looks like on paper. No matter how good y'all look together. It was never meant to be. You, you, you've got a, a retinue of prophets who are in this room tonight. So I did not come for revelation. I came for confirmation. And I only wish that the message that I am giving to you tonight. I could have retroactively given to Jehoshaphat. He is uh, the king. I need you to hear this. He is the king of Judah. Or he is the leader of praise. Or he is a praise and worship leader. And so he, he, here is Jehoshaphat, king of praise. And in 2 Chronicles 22, it says that he sought the Lord with all his heart. His character is above reproach. And uh, y'all not going to believe this, James. They can only find one flaw with Jehoshaphat. There's only one flaw with Jehoshaphat, which is the same flaw of the person behind you. Uh, he loves God. He is a worshiper. And he only has one flaw. His only flaw is he doesn't know how to pick people. If it wasn't for the people he chose, his record would be perfect. I got to pause right here. This, this, this is not a turn to your neighbor sermon. I, I need you to have a flashback about some stuff you went through in your life. If you could have just chose some different kind of people. Do you know how much further you would be in your life if you wouldn't just keep choosing the wrong kind of people? You, you, you would literally be without spot or blemish if you chose right. But uh, you were starving for attention. So you pick somebody who can't nourish your soul. When you were battling loneliness, you found somebody who was a peddler of affirmation. When you were broken through affection, here it is, you thought sex would be an antibiotic. When you were trying to fit in, the invitation looked like validation. 
when you had no money the proposition looked like a blessing but it is only afterwards that your discernment kicked in and you didn't need praise and worship you needed to call Thomas I wish I never met him because if you could have just rolled back the hands of time y'all ain't saying nothing and you could get some people off of your record you'd be in a whole better place y'all ain't saying nothing I just need one shout right here would you just open up your mouth right there I said open up your mouth right there that's not for money, that's not for cars, that's not for a job. But God said, when you scream tonight, I am disconnecting every illegal soul tie. Whoever is attached to you and has no business having authority over your body, over your mind, over your memory. God says, I'm disconnecting the power cord that there will not be any influence. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 I need you to make an announcement to the person beside you. Tell them they are out of your system. Now I... Uh, God help me, you didn't hear what I just said. You don't need your neighbor to say it. I need you to say it out loud. They are out of my system. When I see them, I won't feel nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't care who they with or what they are doing or what they feel about me. I didn't even know that you stopped following me. I'm on a whole nother level because it's out of my system. Jehoshaphat Jehoshaphat's downfall began his downfall began because he made a political decision over a spiritual one in in His downfall began because he made a political decision over a spiritual one in terms of who his son was going to marry. And he built an alliance, here it is, with the king of Israel. Uh, and uh, what you have to understand is that uh, Israel at that time uh, was not a monotheistic region. They ascribed to polytheism. And he says, I am going to make a political decision to expedite my own power. Now here's what's getting ready to mess you up because we're getting ready to traffic in spiritual warfare. This is not who Jehoshaphat married. It is who his offspring married. God help me in here. So there are things in the realms of the spirit that you are getting ready to disrupt. Hallelujah. Because whenever the enemy can't get to you, he'll get to the people who are connected to you. God, y'all don't like me in California. I, I got to tell you this, that when this worship happens in this realm tonight, you are getting ready to circumnavigate who your children are connected to. God, I can't hear nobody. I better go a step further. You're going to go even into the realms to disconnect who your sister is connected to. You're going to get your brother away from certain people. Here it is. Because there's too much that's riding on your family bloodline. 
I am not going to let my sister be in domestic violence. I'm not going to let her be emotionally abused. I'm not going to have her head dealing with the withdrawal of affection. I'm not going to have my son settling for something less than what he's supposed to be in. I declare greater is getting ready to happen for every person who is in my life. Look at the persons down your row say you may want to get out of here tonight because when I give God glory tonight anybody who I got a heart for I'm getting ready to protect their heart y'all ain't saying nothing I've been trying to mind my business and stay in my lane but you too good for that y'all ain't saying nothing do you know your worth do you know your value do you know how you supposed to be loved and how you supposed to be treated the devil is a lie God says if you lift me up tonight watch me orchestrate who your daughter is going be with watch me put in the position who your son is gonna be connected to your daughter is not a side chick she ain't a baby mama she ain't a late night hookup y'all ain't saying nothing but the gates of hell shall not prevail against him when you connect with the wrong person When you connect with the wrong person, the attack is not on your job. The attack is on your assignment. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And so you got to be careful of weapons of mass distractions. Hallelujah. Who are trying to get you so stressed that you don't even have the strength to pray. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You so caught up that you don't even have the energy to read the word of God. Uh, that's why the Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord. Here it is. Don't watch me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Something is wrong. You bring a Negro in church and you got to stop and ask, are you all right? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I, uh, come on. I can't hear nobody. How they can't pray with you, but they can sleep with you. How can they go with you to dinner, but can't go with you to the altar? You need somebody who is equally yoked with what you want from the glory of God. I dare somebody in the room, would you look at your neighbor and say, if you want what I got, you got to do what I do. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Some of y'all are going to have to change seats tonight. Would you do me a favor just to set the order of your role? Would you just give God a 30 second worship and see how the folk around you praise them? If they don't praise them at the same level that you do, Shift your seat. Come on, I can't hear nobody. Come on, I can't, I can't hear nobody. I'm getting ready to say something your grandmother would have never said. God owes you somebody. You done dealt with enough idiots and knuckleheads that you had to pull together, but nobody ever poured into you. But God says, if you give me glory tonight, before Easter gets here, I'm going to send somebody into your life who values your anointing. may be seated in the presence of the Lord. How I don't know where my screamers are but God said you are not going to die by yourself. I can't find nobody. He said you got too much love to be lonely. You got too much to give to be an open vessel. God said watch what I do for you this year. How how could this have happened to Jehoshaphat when he's anointed when he has noble character when he flows in integrity. How does this happen? Uh, it's, uh, it's nestled in verse number 35 where it says that Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, 
joined himself to a hazia. Yeah. Uh, the original, uh, the original word uh, in Hebrew for joined is uh, shabar, C H A B A R. Uh, the original uh, sacred text does not say joined; it says shabar, which means uh, fascination which means uh, charmed, uh, here it is, which means uh, a spell. It, it, it is the weapon against the sacred is seduction. God help me. And see, the problem is uh, Satan knows your taste. God help me so Satan will never tell send you something you ain't attracted to God help me I, I don't know how many of y'all can handle it I'm going to keep it a hundred tonight it's hard uh, no let, let me try it another way it's easy to be sanctified when nobody wants you God, God I can't hear no it's easy to be righteous when you ain't got options y'all ain't saying nothing but I need those of y'all that got to turn the phone over and try to go to sleep because you know who you can call. You know what you can do, but you're trying to keep yourself together. Don't get it twisted just because I ain't got nobody don't mean I can't get nobody. I could take yours if I wanted to, but I'm trying to live at a different level. And so you have to be on high alert. <laughs> you got to be on high alert um, because there have been demoniacs who have been deployed with one intention to seduce you away from your assignment. Because you are saved. You had holy convocation. You are saved. So Satan knows he can't get to your soul, so he'll settle for your body. God, I can't. Did y'all hear what I just said? If he can't get to your soul, he'll settle for your body. So it will contaminate your spirit and misdirect your heart. You got to beware of scammers. Be separate as I am separate. You are in the world, but you are not of it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on now. You can't mix oil with water. Folk who don't have my level of consecration think I'm arrogant. They think I'm stuck up. They think I'm standoffish. They think I'm antisocial. It ain't none of that. But the last time I opened up to Negroes, they used my stuff against me. So now I just keep to myself and mind my business. I, I didn't come here to make friends. I ain't got to go eat with none of y'all. I get my word, mind my business, and go home because I'm on a different path. You are not for everybody. You are not for everybody. You are not for everybody. I better say it again. You are not for everybody. When you are anointed, here it is, you have to do serve time with loneliness. God, I can't hear nobody. You can be lonely. 
and have a house full of people. You can be lonely and your phone blowing up all day. You can be lonely and you're sitting at the table and know you ain't got nothing in common with none of them. You don't even know why you're sitting there. God says, I needed you to be by yourself for a minute because there's some stuff I'm not going to let you go because I don't want them to get the blessing with you. I need them to fall off so you can find out how I can stand when I didn't get supported, when I didn't get affirmation, when I didn't get affection, but I never became bitter, I never became angry because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so Jehoshaphat and Asia came together and he gave up his son to connect with his daughter. Y'all ain't gonna believe it. Just so they could do business. First Kings 22, 47 says Jehoshaphat made ships, here it is, to go to Tarshish. Uh, they were going there to go to Ophir to get gold. Uh, the king of Israel's only intention was to make money. That's the only reason why he was prepared to do the deal. Was because he wanted to make money. Where Jehoshaphat, here it is, did not just want to make money. He wanted to give God glory. But he's going in the business with somebody who doesn't share his conviction. Now it was going to be lucrative if they could get it to work. And please hear my heart, hear my intention. It ain't nothing wrong with making money. But if money is your only aim, how do you expect God to bless it? You got to understand uh, that God is getting ready to raise up marketplace millionaires who never need a microphone. Uh, now, I, I need you all to listen to me because uh, the pulpit is going to be mad with me in about two minutes. Uh, listen to me. D don't even look at apostle right now. Look, look at me. Do not look at the prophets. Look at me. When Jesus chose the 12 disciples, let's get ready to mess you up. When Jesus chose the 12 disciples, not one of the 12 disciples went to seminary. God, y'all ain't saying nothing. Not one of the 12 disciples went to Bible college. You get ready to miss your shout. All 12 of them he called from business. Because Jesus is of the mind, if you don't know how to do business, you're not fit for ministry. All right, I'm getting ready to lose my crowd right here. See, the reason why, listen to me, the reason why a lot of black churches are failing, the reason why a lot of black churches are failing is we're making people leaders for perfect attendance. Not because of proficiency. Just because you can pray don't mean you should be a trustee. God help me. You got to have some business acumen that you can give some direction and some leadership. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me go a step further. Y'all ain't going to like what I'm getting ready to say. Three fourths of the disciples, three fourths of the disciples are more educated than Jesus. God help me, you got a doctor, you got a lawyer, you got an accountant, you got an IRS agent, and y'all forgot Jesus is a blue collar worker. Stay with me, but God says, Jesus says, I am so confident in my anointing that I am not intimidated by competent people. I need folk around me that can add to what I do. I don't need a bunch of yes men and cheerleaders. I need somebody who can say, Pastor, we don't need an LED wall if we can't pay the drama. We don't need, y'all ain't saying nothing. We don't need a new sound system if we can't pay the light bill. We need somebody who can speak truth to power to say, what is the authority of the house? Say something. 
I, I, I got to raise up people. Be seated. I'm coming. I got to raise up people who have a business mind. Isn't it amazing that when he calls the 12 disciples, he didn't call any of the 12 disciples while they were at church. He didn't call any of them at Holy Convocation, none of them at the revival. He went and called them at their job. God, y'all don't like this here. He says, I got to see how you work first. Because if you ain't faithful over that, how you going to come to church and tell people what to do? I can't hear nobody in here. What is amazing is that when they accepted the call to ministry, none of them shut their businesses down. God, it's going to get tight now. None of them shut their business down. And the evidence is after the crucifixion, they said, watch this, let's go back to the office. Can you imagine God gifting you with such a business? Five of y'all better high five me in the spirit. Can you believe God will bless your business at such a level that for three years you don't have to work it? God help me. That God will so bless your business that checks will just keep coming while you were doing ministry. I better pause right here. Every entrepreneur in this room, every person that's got an idea for entrepreneurship, I dare you to open up your mouth and lift your voice right there. God bless my business. Bless my idea. Bless my concept. Bless my nonprofit. I can't hear nobody. Watch God do it. Watch God do it. Here's where you scream. This is your last year working for somebody else. But by next year, this time, you going to be working for yourself. That God will do exceedingly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to say something um, tonight. The apostle brought me because he trusts the anointing on my life. I'm going to release something to you. Listen, I want you to lift your hand right where you are. I want to speak something to you. Hallelujah. I want to speak something to you. I want you to receive it. I, I would tell the members of my church in Atlanta, lift your hands as high as you want to see yourself going. Hallelujah. Watch God. I want you to make this declaration. We've been saying it for the last three years in Atlanta. I want you to say it in California. Listen, lift up that hand. Open up your mouth. I want you to make this declaration. Lord, Lord make, me make me the biggest giver, the biggest giver at, my at my church. Okay, watch this. I'm telling you, something getting ready to break. I'm coming, musician. Come on, say it again with authority. Lord, Lord make me the biggest giver at my church now I want to show you something I want to show you why God is going to answer that prayer God help me God is going to answer that prayer watch this because nobody prays it that people only want wealth for themselves they don't want wealth to advance the kingdom God is not giving you money for you to get red bottoms in a Birkin bag and a Louis belt. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God's got to make you wealthy because there's some things you got to shift in the kingdom. Look at the person beside you and say, you don't even know why God is going to make you wealthy. You don't even know why God is going to make you wealthy. He going to make you wealthy because you the only way your niece and nephew will ever go to college. He's got to make you wealthy because you're going to take your mama off her job. He's got to make you wealthy because you got to take care of your brother till he gets back on his feet he's got to make you wealthy she says I, I got to do something but I can only raise up those who have wealth with an understanding of kingdom apostle I'm going to say this to your uh, college tonight of clergy that is so significant that's going to radically change and impact how it is that you all do ministry when you leave this mountain. Uh, last year, 3,246 churches foreclosed. Last year, 3,246 churches foreclosed. Uh, not because they weren't anointed. 
Not because they weren't giving God glory. Here it is. But because they weren't raising up kingdom millionaires. I'm getting ready to show you something. There is no, I want you to go Google it when you get home. I want you to research it. Have your kid look it up for you. Apostle, there is no Jewish synagogue in America. Not one Jewish synagogue in America that has a mortgage. God, I can't hear no money. <clears throat> not one. I, I, I got to tell you this. It's getting ready to mess you up. Uh, if uh, you were to start a church tonight, if you were to start a church in Church of God in Christ uh, tonight, you got to get 50 people to sign a sheet of paper. You send that sheet of paper down to Memphis. Memphis is going to send you your credentials back, but you need 50 to sign. To start a Jewish synagogue, you don't need 50. You need 12. Y'all ain't going to like it. But the 12 have to have independent wealth. If they don't have independent wealth, they do not qualify as a synagogue. So when Jesus found the 12 disciples, he did not find praise dancers. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He found business people who could undergird the ministry. In the synagogue, y'all not going to like this. In the synagogue, the rabbi never raises the offering. The rabbi never raises the offering. The leaders do. Because they don't want the pastor to compromise the message to make people feel comfortable. Good God, y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me prove it to you in scripture. Nowhere biblically can you ever find Jesus raising an offering. Yet, we find him with a treasurer. God, y'all know the Bible better than me. They're making so much money. They're making so much money that the IRS has an audit and says, is he going to pay taxes on this? How he got all of this money, watch this, that he never asked for, but people just start giving it because they can trust the leaders don't need it because they got their own money. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Whenever you are anointed, I hope y'all can handle this tonight. Whenever you are anointed, you will never have a vision that matches your budget if you can afford it it's not from God y'all ain't saying nothing whenever God gives you a vision he does not check your finance he checks your faith and if you got the faith God is gonna come up with the finance I wish I had somebody in here the shout you are getting ready to hear tonight are for those who are dreaming about something expensive you ain't got the money for it but you got the faith for it but God said do you know who your daddy is that my father is rich in houses and land there's a room with your name on it now it's giving me to get a little bit quiet here. Watch this. And so as a consequence, as a consequence, following the Judaic model, every ministry has got to raise 12 millionaires. You just blacked out. Y'all just missed what I just said. I said every church has a responsibility to raise millionaires. This is my church. This is my first time here. I hope Apostle brings me back. I'm telling you what I tell the members of my church. I don't know y'all like that. This is our first date. I need y'all to listen to me. This is what I tell the members of my church. I say to the members of my church, never go to a church where you can tell which car is the pastor's. Y'all get ready to get mad. Never go to a church where you can tell which car is the pastor's. Watch this. Because the oil starts at the head. Here it is. And if the oil is flowing, 12 other people should be driving just like that. All right. Y'all need some Bible for it. When they went to arrest Jesus, they didn't know which one he was because all the disciples had on linen robes. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to pray that the same oil that's on my shepherd is now getting ready to flow into my life. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. If you believe you are one of God's designated 12 millionaires in this building, don't worry about nobody else, but would you shout for the wealth that's coming to you? Come on, open up your mouth. Hey. I can't hear nobody. I said lift up your voice. I'm going to pay off my church's mortgage. I'm going to buy them a van. I'm going to put my church on TV. We get 
ready to go to a second location. I'm going to treat my first lady. I can't hear nobody. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise. And, uh, and the king of Israel built the ships because he had come into this unholy alliance with the king of praise. And I need you to see what God did with a brand new fleet of ships. God destroyed every ship. Hear this and never sent a storm. There is no shark in the water. They just become unglued. Because God was not going to let the deal work. God help me. So before it could ever get started. God crashed the ship at the dock. God help me. How would you lift up that hand please? Softly for me, sir. Hallelujah. Lift up that hand. I hope you got your shouting out of you tonight because there won't be much after this. Yeah. You got all your dancing out with Bishop Jacobs last night. I speak over every lifted hand that God tonight will break up every deal he's not in. God, I can't hear nobody. The contract is not going to go through. The position will not be yours if his name is not going to be glorified. I can't hear no worshipers in here. I don't care how long you've been in it. If God ain't in it, it is never going to set sail. Hallelujah. God block every door I'm not supposed to walk in. This is where the real mature worshipers shout. Get me away from every friendship circle that is not authentic. I, I don't want folks smiling in my face and stabbing me in the back. Get me out of a toxic work environment where I'm stressed out and patches of my hair on my pillowcase. I need you to put me in a ministry where folk ain't gonna block me or judge me but they gonna push me because of the oil that's on my life. God break every ship. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Holy God. It ain't gonna work if he ain't in it. Hallelujah. I know some of y'all don't want to hear it. I said it ain't going to work if he ain't in it. it the deal is not going to happen unless God is in it. He, he ain't ever going to let you get the property if God ain't in it. He'll never let you walk down that aisle if God ain't in it. Hallelujah. You may be seated for the last time tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the spirit realm, I give God permission to lock every door he's not behind. Oh my God, even if I lose the deposit, God get me out of it. I'd rather pay the penalty. I can't hear nobody if I... I got to get out of this early because it's choking me. My, my family ain't even going to understand why I'm leaving this, but I can't stay in something where I don't feel fulfilled and don't feel honored and don't feel respected. God, cut every tie I'm not supposed to be a part of. Not my will, but your will be done. God, I trust you even if the cut is painful. Hallelujah. No wonder it didn't work. Hallelujah. No wonder it didn't work. Oh my God, I'm waiting on the worship bus. No, no wonder it didn't work. Oh my God, I couldn't figure it out. No wonder it didn't work. But I came for 15 of you. All things work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I, I'd rather be by myself than be outside of the will of God for my life. No wonder it didn't work. Oh. Oh. 
Hallelujah. You, you may be seated. I don't know what's wrong with you tonight. Hallelujah. I couldn't see it then, but I value it now. I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm grateful I didn't stay with that sociopath. And the way I could have flourished connected to somebody insecure. God, I can't hear nobody in here. Ain't, ain't no way it was going to work out if they keep holding over my head what they did for me. If, if you love me, you should have done it from your heart. You shouldn't have used it as a power tool if you're my real friend. Why you got an attitude with my elevation? No wonder it didn't work out. And so tonight, I, uh, in closing, I wanted to pull you together with a proclamation, with a pronouncement that you probably have not heard in all of your years in church. I want you to be seated. I'm, I'm going to close the way that I started. Um, it's, it's probably the most uncanny, unorthodox message you've, you've heard in a long time. But, um, I want you to hear my heart and hear my intention is that I am not prophesying marriages. I am, uh, I am not uh, declaring engagements. I want to be consistent with the text. Listen to me. I am speaking over you that God is getting ready to bring somebody into your life. Here it is. For you to do business with. The immature people ain't ready for this level of grace. And they're going to bring something to the table that you do not have. They've got a level of expertise that you didn't even know that you needed. They have a level of discipline that you need to have exacted out of your life. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, we may be sitting here on purpose. God may have brought us together to do business together. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to show you because you've seen it. You've seen it, but you never recognized it. Paul and Silas are in jail. And uh, somewhere around 1145, they came up with a business plan. Let's start a bail bond company. God, God I can't hear nobody. They started drawing out the plan on how they're going to build a bail bond company where it is that neither of them are licensed, insured, or certified. So at midnight, they start praising God. I'm going to show you how God blessed the business. When they began praising God, it wasn't just their door that opened. God, I can't hear nobody, but every person connected to them had a door open in their life. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God said, do you know how many people I'm going to bless when you finally get your idea off the ground? Do you know how many lives are going to be transformed when you finally get your focus and your discipline together? Do you know how much money you're going to make when you stop dealing with that loser? I needed you to get your mind right. I'm going to have you open a bail bomb business when you have no experience in it. Then uh, he says, I'm going to get uh, three boys that are homeschooled. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, help me. And uh, how this is uh, before the hour of smoke detectors. And they're thrown in a fiery furnace and they came up with the idea, let's come up with a firefighter company that doesn't need water. Oh God, I can't hear nobody in here. But we have to be exhibit A, that we are not just the president and the CEO, we're clients. If folks see us come out of it, then they'll believe our product works. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Do you know 
the deliverance mantle is on you whatever you've been brought out of is what you are called to if you ain't never been in nothing you ain't got an anointing for nothing but I need you to know that when you give God glory tonight whoever is stuck in what you used to be in they're getting ready to come out of it I can't hear no firefighters in here. You ought to lift up your voice like you get ready to come out of it. You may be seated. And this is the last time I'll tell you to do that tonight. Is to be seated. After this, I'm no longer responsible. You may be seated. All right. Let's close the way we started. Would you be seated, please? Thank you so very much. Um, I'll close the way I started. While you're seated, would you um, take your neighbor by the hand? Yeah. Hallelujah. Look at the person beside you and tell them we're getting ready to start a business tonight. I just had the wrong partners. God help me, but I feel like you the one I can do business with. Come on, pull on that neighbor. If two or three are gathered together in my name, come on, we might as well go there. There will I be also. Look at your neighbor and ask him, what business are we going into tonight? Tonight we opening the demon chasing business. We came to kill a witch tonight. That no weapon that is formed against you. Hold on, hold on. Y'all don't follow directions. Be seated. Please. Be seated. I'm trying to open up the business plan. Would y'all be, y'all got a spirit of disobedience. Be seated. Please. Be seated. Take that neighbor by the hand. Take that neighbor by the hand. You get ready to open a business tonight that the gates of hell shall not prevail. I can't hear nobody. Look at your neighbor and say, when I scream, you scream. Just like that. I am a demon buster. And whatever demons been chasing the marriages in your family, it is destroyed tonight. When I open up my mouth, whatever's been attacking your heart, been attacking your self-esteem, been attacking your self-love, it's getting ready to be killed tonight. Pull on that neighbor and say, all this time, you've been fighting by yourself, but tonight we wrestle that no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper when I lift him up everything that I declare is coming to pass I speak those things that are not as though they already are whatsoever I loose in heaven shall be loosed in the earth whatsoever I bind in the earth shall be bound in heaven lift him up lift him up until he speaks from eternity and if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me business is open let the redeemed of the Lord shout like every generational demon is about to be destroyed. I can't hear no shouters. I ain't shouting for no Mercedes. I speak against every pedophile, against every molester, every nasty old man, every wicked aunt, every satanic deacon. Cover my baby. Cover my child. Cover my children. Cover my heart. I need it. I need it. I need it. Come on, give.
give somebody a high five and tell them business is open. You're going to do ministry and you're going to make money. I got the wrong church. I said you're going to do ministry and you're going to make money. You are multi, multi millionaire, but I'm a millionaire that speaks in tongues. I'm a millionaire that lays hands on the sick. I'm a millionaire that steps on Scorpio and can't nobody. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody. 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 Give three people a high five and tell them get ready. You about to make more money than you ever made in your life. Get ready. Come on, I can't hear nobody. Shout for your biggest bill. Whatever is your biggest bill is cut in half tonight. Whatever is your biggest bill is paid in full. Whatever they've been calling you about, your stuff ain't getting took. They better not shut your lights off. Your baby is going to school. Your mama is retiring early. No weapon. How did you feel when you became debt free? How did you feel when you moved into the bigger house? How did you feel? I see you got a dance on you. Look at your neighbor and say, when was the last time you were this close to a millionaire? Watch my dance. Watch my shout. Watch my spin. Watch my jump. Lift that hand, I got to go. Lift that hand, softly. Lift that hand. Apostle, thank you for having me. I gotta say one last thing and uh, I relinquish the mic, my time has elapsed. I need your hand lifted. I don't know how it is. I don't know how it is that Apostle brought me tonight. He could have brought me any day of this convocation. But I am not here for an engagement. I'm here for an assignment. I need that hand lifted. Listen to me, please. I know you're tired, but he had his up for three hours. And I'm only asking for two minutes. Listen to me. I don't know why Apostle brought me tonight to... But I want you to see in the realm of the spirit what took place tonight. That tonight, listen to me, tonight is leap year. The 29th of February. I hope you uh, don't miss what I'm trying to tell you. 
the 29th of February that only happens once every four years. Yeah. It is the earth redirecting itself to be in alignment with the sun. Because for four years it's been out of order. God, I wish I had a sanctified church. One worship tonight. The visitors, y'all ain't got to do nothing. One worship tonight is going to make up for the last four years. God, I can't hear nobody. For everything you went through since 2019, God says, I'm going to put money back in your savings. I'm going to put equity back into your house. I'm going to adjust the clock for you to catch up on what you missed during COVID. I'm giving you four years of your life back. I speak over every lifted hand that every blessing and every opportunity every door that is due to you since 2019 is now going to be open to you what it is that Jehoshaphat went through was not just for him but it was about his child I pray that God will accelerate the destiny of your children by four years. I can't believe y'all ain't shouting about that. Let me try it another way and if y'all don't scream, I'ma drop this mic and get on the plane. God says, watch me make your children better than their father. God, I can't hear. Did y'all hear what I just said? Watch me make your child. Your child ain't going to make the mistakes their father made. He's going to be in a different place. He's going to be in a different position. They're going to make more shrewd business decisions. Your children are going to have business acumen. Your children, here it is, are going to captain industries. Your children are going to nations their cousins cannot pronounce. Your children, I'm waiting for y'all to wake up in here. Your children have been on the satanic radar because all this time you didn't even realize you were raising a prophet. God, I can't hear nobody. Your son and your daughter is going to prophesy. You think you got regular kids? There's an anointing on your child's life. Now speak. I speak over every lifted hand that the next four years will make up for the last four years. From 2024 to 2028, you are going to be standing on business. But I can't hear nobody in here. You are about to enter into the best deal of your life and cash the biggest check you've ever had written with your name on it. Those of you, your faith is connected to my faith tonight. Would you explode in worship and praise and adulation? Come on, open up your mouth like God will do it. Come on, you only got five seconds left. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Apostle, thank you for having me. I'm grateful. I want to say something. I want to say... Uh,
I'm going to say something.